we're going to implement the reset password function in our service layer. This is a very important function and it will actually update our database with a new password for the user. So I'll start with updating the interface for this service. I'll go to service package and open user service. I'll need to create a function there, which is called reset password and it takes two arguments, token and password. So let's go there and this uh, function also returns boolean value, reset password, and it takes string token and string password. Let's double check the order of our arguments, token and the password. So that's correct. Let's now go to service implementation class and add unimplemented methods. I'll move mouse over the user service implementation class. I'll choose add and implemented methods. Scroll down and this is my function. I have prepared a code snippet and I will walk you through because this is quite lengthy. So the very first thing that I will do once I have token is I will check if this token has expired or not. And we do already have an utility class and a function that checks if this token has expired or not. So I'll go there. And this is our function. It simply parses the uh, JSON web token and then it gets its body and it gets the expiration time set in this token and it then creates the today's date and checks if the token has been expired or not. Okay, so let's go back to user service implementation. If token has expired, then we will simply return return value, which is currently set to false. Otherwise, we will proceed. And the next step, I want to check if the token that is provided here does exist in our database and it's the token that we have generated. So I will need to find this token in the tokens database table. I'll go into password reset token repository and I'll have to provide a new function there. At this moment, it's empty. And I will add one method here, which will need to return password reset token entity. It needs to be called find by token and it needs to accept string token. So it returns password reset token entity because it is the password reset token repository and all the objects that it returns are of data type password reset token entity. We have declared it here. And then we follow Spring Data GPA query method syntaxes. We first use a keyword find by and then we provide a field name by which we want to query that database table. In our database table that holds tokens, we have a field called token. And if I go to my password reset token entity, I should have a field which is called token here, get token and set token. And this is the class field token. So this is why this method is called find by token. And then we provide the token value by which a Spring Data GPA will query the database and will return a record which matches this token value. We don't have to write any SQL. Spring Data GPA will do all of this for us. So let's go back to user service implementation. Scroll down. Okay, so now we have find by token. It's no longer underlined. And now once we have the password reset token entity object, we will check if it's now or not. Because if it was not found in our database table, the token does not exist and we cannot update user's password because there is no valid token. So uh, if the token is valid, then we know it has not expired, it exists in our database, we are good to update the password. And remember that in our database, we do not store password in clear text. We encode them using Spring Framework Secure Encryption. And that encryption is our bcrypt password encoder. So I can open this class. We are auto-wiring it here. The data type of this class is bcrypt password encoder. So we'll use this. And it has a method which is called encode. Again, the implementation of this method is done by Spring Framework. We are not the ones to implement the encode method. It does its job. So we encode the password. And then we need to update user password in the database. We now have the password reset token entity. So we take this password reset token entity and we get user details from this token entity. 
If we look at the token entity class, then it holds database ID, it holds the token entity, and then it also holds user details. It will fetch user details because our database records are linked with the join column. Okay, so let's go back to our user service implementation. So now by calling method get user details, we will load user details. And this time with the help of password reset token entity, user details will be loaded from the users table. And we can now use this user entity to set a new password for the user. And then we will use user repository, which is also auto wired into our class. We have auto wired this user repository here. So the instance of this object is available to us. And we will use this object to save the user entity, which is now has a new password. Okay, and once the save method is called and successfully executed, an updated user entity object will be returned back to us. So once we have an updated user entity object, what we can do, we can check if it's not now, and we can take the encrypted password from this object. And then we can check if this encrypted password, which has been stored in the database, is equal to the ones that we have generated. So if these two values, the value which is stored in the database now, and the value which we have just generated are equal, then we know for sure that the password has been updated. So I set the return value is true. And then the final step, I use the password reset token repository to delete the record. And the delete method is provided for us out of box. So if I use a password reset token repository, put dot and then type delete, I have a few delete implementation, just like with save and find, I don't have to implement this method myself, again, thanks to Sprint Data GPA. So I simply call delete method and I give it an entity which I want to delete. And this is our password reset token entity. Because token has been used, we no longer need it. So I will delete it from our database. And next time, if user attempts to use the same token for password reset, even though if token passes the validation for expiry date, we will not have it in database and the find by token will return now and user will not be able to use same token twice. Okay, let's save this. And let's go to our user controller, make sure we don't have underlining here anymore. So the reset password function is done. And this means we can try this request and see if it works.